Hey, what's up everyone? Morty Crowson here, and today we're going to be breaking down Anthony Richardson's throw mechanics, and we're going to start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the Performance Lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your ability to be quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so this is from Anthony Richardson's Pro Day, and this was just a couple days ago, something he did really, really good at. He ran a 4-4, obviously really big. He's got a ton of arm strength and is just continuing to soar in terms of his overall draft stock. So I just thought I'd go ahead and make a video about his throwing mechanics. Does a great job sitting back into his back leg, being under control. That's what a lot of these really big quarterbacks are able to do is move very easily into the correct positions. That's why it's such an advantage to be Hall as a quarterback is you can easily get into a three-step drop, easily get himself to be able to and, and get plenty of depth, get into that load, and now be able to open up his hips. And typically what we see is when people are throwing to the left, we recently talked about this, is being maybe a little bit closed off with the hips. So as he's going through, we can see he gets that extra foot rotation to be able to get his hips all the way around. So you notice how his toes start off being a little bit more closed off. And then as the ball's coming out of his hands, he's fully rotating into that back leg. Doesn't need a ton of shift of his weight here. Just needs to be able to get that football right up and around. We can look into his release time. It looks like the ball's coming out of his hand at about 0.31, or that front uh, hand is leaving the ball at 0.31. And then it's out by 5.8, right? So that's under 0.3. Very, very efficient in terms of the time there. Now we're going to look at the out. And, and notice when he's throwing the out, now he's much more open here with his body. Right, so he's very, very much allowing himself to be able to get the hips to be able to come all the way around, does a great job of keeping that front shoulder closed, and then gets that elbow all the way through as he's releasing the ball. I wish we could see more with that wrist flick and where he's getting the nose of the football as it's coming out of his hands, but it just seems like because of how the ball flies that he's very, very smooth with how the ball is able to come out of his hands. And now we have the deep ball, and what's awesome about the deep ball is now we can see the big change in the position of his body so we got 0.27 in terms of where the ball starts to leave the hand and then he has the ball out by 5-4 so again under 0.3 seconds so he's very effective very efficient with how much time it takes the ball to be able to get out of his hands notice with this step he's very much on that back leg and he's not at all fast at shifting his weight forward. Even at this position, he's still leaning back a ton by keeping this front shoulder high. And as he loads himself up here, he's just allowing that ball to get a little bit lower. And then from there, gets that elbow to come right up and around. So he's not getting the ball back behind his head. I see that happen all the time with quarterbacks as they get all this load of trying to get the arm back, but instead is really getting the elbow here. So now he's creating external rotation in the shoulder. What happens when you go back behind it's more of like an abduction movement which means that you're bringing your hand away or your elbow away from your body where when you're rotating you go here and it's more of like an elbow dominated movement which creates much more stretch on the shoulder on the pec so then as he's coming through he's able to get much more of the under part of the arm the lats the triceps the serratus more of those muscles to be involved in being able to come through instead of just relying a ton on the pecs and, and those muscles so allowing more of the muscles in the back and then also using the momentum. Look, even as the ball is coming out of his hands, he's still back into that back leg as it's coming out of his hands, which allows him to then finish and shift his weight forward after he releases the ball instead of having all the weight forward before the ball is coming out of his hands. Another common thing that we see with quarterbacks is they're so fast to get the, all of the weight to shift forward, so fast to get all the weight or the ball way back behind. And then the last Last thing is very quick to really opening up that front shoulder another common mistake that we see notice how he's keeping that shoulder closed getting those hips to open up and then after he gets those hips to open up then he's able to come through with that front shoulder which makes it so he's very efficient with how the ball comes out of his hands and he's able to throw the ball very far very effectively now he could definitely rely a lot on his body his overall size to be able to get himself there but he's also created a ton of great rhythm and sequence within 
and how he generates force through his hips, through his core, and then into his shoulder. And that's why he's able to do it so well. Because even when the ball's coming out of his hands, the ball is not that high up in terms of the trajectory of the football. We see a lot of guys that will like almost have the ball facing straight up as it's coming out of his hands. The ball for him is slightly higher, but it's not very high. He's just releasing it a little bit further back behind his head, which ends up allowing himself to get, again, a ton of wrist action on it, a ton of lat action or, or back action, uh, serratus, tricep, muscles like that, uh, which is just such a huge advantage when it comes to being able to throw the football far. And I think he was throwing the ball like 65, 70 yards there uh, pretty effectively. And if you're interested in learning more about how to throw the football further, I have a ton of great resources online to be able to do that. There is a whole quarterback program that we have that I think is one of the best things for quarterbacks to utilize in order to improve their mechanics. A lot of this ends up being very mechanic based. So you have to be very, very specific into how am I able to maximize my body and, and how am I able to create the right timing and sequence within my body in order to throw the ball further. I see so many quarterbacks who just make the mistake of not having proper mechanics, not understanding how to utilize their body. They have the size, they have the strength, they have a lot of the things that it takes to be able to get themselves in the next level, except for the mechanics, except for the arm strength, and instead are spending a lot of time at just being able to do game type situations or game type drills or just working on throwing the ball to their receivers and getting a better timing. And yeah, that's important when it comes to having success on the field and you need to have success in the field in order to get yourself to the next level. But you also have to have great mechanics. You could have all the success. We see this again all the time where quarterbacks have a lot of success, but don't end up getting offers and don't end up going to the next level. And it's not because you're not a good quarterback. You're a good quarterback, but that's all you are. You're a good quarterback. You don't have great mechanics. There's nothing great about you. That's what's going to take you to the next level. Use. You have to be able to go from good to great. So don't get caught up in what it is that you're doing on the field. It's not as much about what it is you're doing on the field is what are your mechanics? What can teams build off of? What's going to separate you from the pack? And really, when you go to these camps, how well can you really showcase your skills? Because when you go to these camps, if you go and don't have a strong arm or not able to really showcase something that's elite about you, then that's going to just be the case. You're going to just be another guy. There's not a lot of quarterbacks that are getting scholarships to Division I colleges. It's a very small small pool of people and there's a very big country there's a lot of kids that want to play division one quarterback that want to play division one football in general and that want to play division one quarterback and that are big and that are strong and that are able to play well on Fridays and are able to throw the ball really far and so if you can't separate yourself from those four or five things then the likelihood of you getting any type of interest is slim to none you got to put in your time to be able to establish the mechanics and that's why I say throw 60 you've got to at least be able to throw the ball 60 yards in order to be able to get looked at it least 60 closer to 65 is better uh, but you got to at least be able to get to 60 so uh, again thanks for watching check out that description sorry to go on a bit of a tangent there but it's important for you to understand in order to get to the next level what it is that you got to do because i want you guys to get there trust me and i think that this program can make it happen you just got to be able to commit to it and spend the time with it and, and you'll be able to get the results from there so again thanks for watching if you have any questions you can leave those down below and we'll talk to you soon